What's going on everyone? You ever wanted to add extra battery capacity to your bike? I'm gonna do it today. I've got this 52 volt, 17 amp hour battery pack and I'm gonna add it on to the Spark Cycle Works Bandit using this part also from Spark Cycle Works, which is their battery blender. And they have an excellent video on their website showing exactly how this thing works and what it does. But to summarize it for you, it allows you to take multiple batteries that could be at different charge levels different voltages and even different capacities you can combine them all into one using this you plug an input into each end and then the output goes into your controller and this does all the hard work for you all the thinking is done for you so if you don't know what you're doing connecting multiple battery packs and i definitely don't this thing will allow you to do it probably the easiest and the safest way now it's not cheap this part costs 150 dollars, but at least it gives you that peace of mind knowing that it's done right now, I've got the battery, I've got the bike, I've got the part. What I wanna show you today is, okay, let's actually do this and see what kind of issues we might run into. Let's get started. All right, real quick, let me show you all the pieces and parts I'm working with. So of course we got our battery pack, which is gonna slide onto our battery cradle, which you also need to get mounted on the bike. And then our battery blender here, this uses XT60 plugs. So whatever wires coming out of your battery or your battery cradle, you have to get an XT60 on the end to be able to plug into the battery blender. So you can see the way it was done here. Coming off of the battery cradle, there's these Anderson power poles, and then there's this adapter piece, taking it from the Anderson connectors over to XT60. So however you gotta do it to get an XT60 on the end, whether you're soldering these on or buying an adapter like this, that's what you gotta end up with so it can easily plug into here. But I've also gotta get it mounted on the bike. I wanna put it on that top tube, so that's where this part comes in. I bought this from Spark Cycle Works as well. It is the, you know, the battery mounting adapter piece and it's got these two pieces like that. Just two pieces of aluminum. I think this was like 30 bucks or something. This is gonna sit up here. It's custom fit for right up here. I'm gonna have to uh, you know, unbolt the seat because these two holes up here you gotta go use the seat bolts. And then your wire for your battery will go down through that circle and then these slots are so you can mount the battery cradle right onto this and it'll sit right up in here on this top bar nicely. And then the way it attaches on there is you've got this other aluminum piece that's going to go on the underside of that top bar. And it'll just kind of sandwich and hold itself on there. You'll see as I install it. But and then you've got your hardware here, some rubber mount protectors. So this is all the parts that we've got. Let's see if we can't get this seat unbolted real quick and get our battery cradle mounting plate mounted on the top bar so we can kind of test fit this and see how it's going to work. All right, so my first question, you've got the mounting plate and then you've got this piece here. So this is going to set on the top tube and then this plate goes underneath and you clamp them together. That's what holds it down. But it also came with these two like rubber grommets, which I was thinking, you know, they would go like on top of this little plate like this and then you'd sandwich it and that's what would protect your paint job from just being up against this bare metal. But the more I looked at it, you know, the rubber grommets, they fit in this hole perfectly, you know, where your battery wire is going to go through. So I think that's what these are for. Protect your battery wire so it doesn't get cut on the sharp aluminum. So I still need to, you know, this goes under the seat like this. But I've got metal on your paint job here. So what I might do is take an old uh, popped tire tube and put some custom rubber to put here. So when I mount this, it's just not metal right onto my paint job. It's got a little bit of rubber cushion there. So I might improvise that. All right, doesn't gotta be perfect. I like that. I just want something between the metal and the paint so I don't scratch up the paint. So I can always trim it later with a little razor blade when I'm done, but I'm gonna sandwich it like this instead. All right, we got everything mocked up. So what I did was I took the long bolt that came with the mounting plate. I went down through the battery cradle, through the mounting plate, through my rubber there, which I'll just trim this excess rubber off. Comes out the bottom, another layer of rubber there, into the next mounting plate with the bolt on the bottom. Holds it in there pretty darn secure. Back of the mounting plate will be held in with the seat bolts. I might put you know one more bolt here for the battery cradle to make sure that's good and secure, but we should be able to just grab our battery here and it'll slide right on like that. And that's what it's gonna look like when we're all done. But I think it fits on there pretty nice. And you can see where I got our wire hanging out. So it came out of the battery cradle down through that little hole with the rubber grommet on it out here. And then we're gonna have to open up the controller box on the other side 
and dig out the wiring and get everything plugged into our battery blender. So let's try that next. All right, let's check out some wiring. We want to find battery connection stuff right here. This looks like it, red and black. There's your plug coming out of your controller and then into this big old fat plug, which goes into the battery. So we're gonna unplug right here. I'm gonna have to cut this uh, shrink wrap so I can get to the plug. All right, so I'm already seeing my next problem, which is, you know, here's my little adapter. So let's plug this thing back in. All right, we got that set up. Now I've only got so much wire. I need to, I can only get to, have to zip tie it to the frame there. So I'm only gonna get to like right here. So I need this thing, I guess, to be like right here. Or I need to extend this wire to get everything inside here, which would probably be ideal, having this all enclosed in there. I don't really want this exposed to the elements, I don't think. So I mean, they're gonna have to put it out here, somehow get this wire out of here, which I don't see it getting out of there. The control of this big metal box has a hole right here where all the wires go in, but it's a very small hole. And I don't think I can squeeze this plug out there. There's a lot of extra wiring here that I could use. I could wrap this up here and just connect everything right here. Maybe even under the seat. It would stay dry under the seat like that. But it'd be a challenge getting this wire out of this box. I don't know. All right, here's what I'm talking about. I need to get that plug outside. And there's just so many, you got the motor wire going in, a bunch of other little wires back here and the battery wire. It's a really tight fit. I might, if I can work at it a little bit, I might be able to get it out of there. Okay, whoa, 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 wait a second, wait a second. I don't need to take that connection out of here. That needs to stay in here because what I'm realizing is the controller plug is very short and this also needs to plug into the blender. So this blender is going to have to be inside this box and everything's got to plug inside there. So this controller plugs into it. This wire that I was trying to feed out, nope, that stays in there so it can plug into the blender. The problem is my extra battery pack with this pigtail that needs plugged in, this isn't long enough. I'm stuck for the day. This is, this is not finishing today because I need to make this longer. I gotta go buy some 12 gauge wire and solder up new connections. Yeah, make sure you have a lot of slack coming off your you know, auxiliary battery here. So you got plenty of wire to work with. But I'll stop for the day and I guess I'll pick up once I get all the uh, wire and connectors and parts that I need to finish. All right, it's two days later and I think I have all the pieces I need to finish off this job. So I ordered extra wire, we got XT60 connectors, and we got some Anderson connectors as well. So I can make another one of these. I'm gonna make this exact same thing, but like three or four times longer. I wanna maintain these Anderson connections here to connect to the battery cradle. That way, if I ever wanna take off this battery and the cradle and everything, I can just disconnect it right here at the Anderson poles and remove everything and not have to deal with the wiring inside the box. So I make another one of these a little bit longer and that'll give us enough to follow the frame, hide it really nice and neat, go inside the box, plug in, boom, we're done. Let's do it. All right, so we got our extension wire constructed. Here it is. We got an XT60 on this end and then the Anderson power poles on this end. We got a lot of slack here so I can route this up the frame and connect to my other battery plugs there hanging down. So now all I'll left to do is plug this in. So here's my battery blender and you're gonna plug in one battery here, another battery here, and then the controller into one of these center plugs. And then I just put some black tape over this one that's not gonna be used. So this is my existing battery that was right here. We can plug that one in to this end. The uh, auxiliary battery I just put on will get plugged into this end. Now we plug our controller into the output right here. And then you don't have to use that one, so we're all set. We'll try to get this jumbled mess of wires back in there nice and neat, and then we'll put our batteries on and give it a shot and see if it worked or not. All right, here's the finished product. Project complete. And you can see how I routed the wiring down that frame tube right there. Just zip tied it along with all the other wiring that's going back to the tail light and everything. Looks really clean, actually. So I'm happy with that. And uh, now the moment of truth, we gotta see if it actually works. So I've got both the batteries in the off position right now, and we're gonna test them one by one. So let's turn the, the original battery on 
and see if we can power this thing up. So hit our power button. Okay, we got juice. So the original battery works. That's good, let's turn this back off. I'm gonna turn this battery off. Let's get rid of all the juice left in the system. We'll hold the power button. Probably see it flash. Okay, so now all the power's out of the system. I'm gonna turn the new battery on. See if it'll work off of just this battery. Power button. Hey, hey. All right, well, now we're running off of this battery pack. Perfect, so it works. They both work, and of course they'll work at the same time as well, I assume. Let's turn this one on. Still functioning, that's a good sign. All right, so now this Spark Cycle Works Bandit now has the most battery pack of any bike in this garage. Because this one on the bottom is a 25 amp hour, and this one's a 17 amp hour, and they're both 52 volt. So what is that, 42 amp hours at 52 volts? That's a lot. We're gonna have to, I guess, do a range test on this to see how far it's gonna go, but let's take it for a quick ride and just see if I notice anything different about it. Maybe, I don't think it adds any top speed or anything. You probably get less voltage sag, but let's go test it out. All right, time to take her for a quick spin and see what she's got. Cool looking bike, really cool looking bike. This thing's been feeling strong lately. My dad rode it the other day and I think he went faster on it than I ever went. I don't know how, but even before putting the other battery pack on, it's been feeling pretty strong. But let's go out here. I'm gonna ride over to the uh, my top speed area and do the same top speed as I did when I did the review video. Let's see if this thing's any faster. We got the tires pumped up nice, nice and firm, fast rolling tires. I changed to a twist throttle instead of the thumb. Gotta have twist throttle. All right, no traffic. Let's move on out here. I mean, 35, 36 with ease. 37, 38, 39. Yeah, see, what the heck? I can't wait to test it over here on the top speed run. All right, let's jump out on this 45 mile an hour road. Get us up to speed. Going slight uphill right now. Kind of flattens off. This and this right here is pretty flat. Maybe a slight downhill. Pretty smooth 39 there. That's about what it did last time. 40. Yeah, 40 mile an hour. This is a 40 mile an hour bike. But having the twist throttle so much nicer, man. I can't do the thumb throttles. I, I can get used to them a little bit from doing review videos, but man, if I'm going to keep a bike, I want to have a twist throttle on it, especially this one, which feels like a little miniature motorcycle. Let's cruise down through here. There's never like anyone down here. Ooh, is it windy today? Wow. Thirty-six through the neighborhoods. Thirty-seven. It'll be an interesting range test to see, you know, how far you can go just kind of running it all out like that, 35 plus miles an hour, because that's probably how I'll do it. Otherwise, the range test will take literally forever. But a very, very smooth riding bike. Some of that's probably the tires, but suspension's nice. I mean, the handling feels the same as far as, you know, I put that extra weight up on the top tube there, but it doesn't feel like it's any heavier. It doesn't handle any differently. So yeah, good addition. That was pretty easy to do with the exception of, you know, doing the soldering and the wiring. But it looks nice on there, I think. I'll show you what it looks like again. 
but we got a ton of battery pack now holy cow there you go but i'll put a link to this bike below if you want to check it out spark cycle works bandit made in the usa even that battery blender that i used from them that's 100 percent manufactured in the usa if uh if you want to support the united states of america this is definitely a bike for someone that wants to maybe commute or they like ride and throttle only right you can pedal it. it's actually not bad pedaling it's one of the more comfortable moped style bikes to pedal it's, and it's got a huge chain ring on the front like 62 but let's head back to the garage and kind of wrap this up a bit well, I hope you found that helpful today to see a real life installation of a second battery pack and what it takes to get the job done. It's going to differ depending on what battery pack and what bike you put it on. But two main things I think to be aware of going in, you're going to have to figure out a way to mount the battery pack. That's problem one, right? Spark made it easy because they sell that battery mounting plate. So that was simple. Uh, next problem is getting the right plugs on the end of your battery wires. So I would say there, be ready to solder up some of your own connections. It's really not hard. I've taught myself to do it. I'm terrible at it, but it's all hidden under the shrink wrap. So good to go there or be ready to buy connectors or you know, pre-made extension things if you need it. So those are the two parts that I struggled with on uh, after that. After I had all the plugs, everything's just plug and play, which was really nice with that battery blender. So I'll link everything, you know, that I end up using all the electrical parts and everything below so you can find it. But yeah, I'm happy. I got a ton of extra battery pack. I'll do a range test on it to figure out, you know, how far it's going to go now. But I think it looks good on there. What do you think? Uh, let me know questions, comments down below. Again, hope you found it helpful, informative, at least fun to watch. If you did, consider hitting subscribe. Talk to y'all later. Thanks.